Hey guys, what is up? This video is going to be very exciting because I'm unboxing my brand new MacBook Pro with Retina display. 13 inch, early 2015 model. Slice some packaging and tear it off. Tear off the plastic and slide it out. Oh, gorgeous smell of a new Apple product. Oh, let's turn on the power. And hey, we get a black background with a white Apple logo. Focus the camera. And there we go. It is booted into OS 10.10 .10 Yosemite, as you guys can see. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is upgrade to OS 10 El Capitan. Okay guys, as you can see, El Capitan is now downloading, which is good. About five years ago, I bought this early 2015 13 inch MacBook Pro with Retina display and it has done a fabulous job of doing lots of things over the years from starting off with very light 1080p editing on iMovie all the way up to the 4K editing in Premiere and it's done an extraordinary job with everything. It's very smooth, it's responsive and it's stable. However, nowadays, five years later in 2020, I could do with a bit of a spec upgrade now to a much larger processor, more RAM and a better graphics card, in fact, a dedicated GPU. So I went out today and bought this, so bye bye to the 13 inch. I went out today and bought this brand new, if I can open this, MacBook Pro 16 inch, late 2019 base model, which costed an awful lot of money. It's got a 2.6 gigahertz, six core Intel i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, and a AMD Radeon Pro 5300M graphics. And I also bought a little accessory for the laptop. I'll buy more accessories later on, but to start off with, I bought a Satechi USB-C Slim V2 USB hub, which has HDMI, USB ports, uh, SD card slot, and another USB-C. Because obviously the new MacBook Pros don't have a regular USB, it's all USB-C and then the headphone jack. And sorry if I look ridiculous from a few angles because I will have a GoPro on my head so I'm doing a point of view at the same time, so let's get into it. Okay, so first off we'll be looking around the box. On the front of the box we have a picture of the MacBook Pro itself with the keyboard and the screen and one of the main backgrounds of Mac OS. On the bottom of the box you have the MacBook Pro branding. On the left side you have the grey Apple logo. Up top, we have the MacBook Pro brain again, and on the right side, we have the Apple logo again. On the, on the back of the box, we have all the serial numbers and all the specs, which I explained before in the Apple Mac logo here. So now we'll get into the unboxing video. I have not done an unboxing in so long, so sorry if this is crap, and I still don't have a proper unboxing cell, which is why I'm doing the multi-cam thing. So we have this little tab, which we'll pull right now. Oh. It's just, this just takes me back to when I did the 13 inch. And let's lift the lid up. What's the open that is? Oh, look at that. So as you can probably see, I ordered the laptop in space gray, which will lift the tab up now. So that's the MacBook Pro itself. Look how beautiful it looks in the space gray. We'll put this aside for a sec. First off, we have the design by Apple in California. So we'll open that up. Oh, if this wants to open up, Six hours later. First off, you have the quick start guide, which just shows you the basics and how to use the, your computer and how to use Mac OS Catalina, all that stuff. And then you have some regulatory information. And for the first time I've ever seen, Apple stickers that aren't white, they're space gray to match with the MacBook, which I'm really, this actually gets me really high since I'm a hoarder with Apple stickers anyhow. We then have the 96 watt, I think it's 95, 96, USB-C power adapter. Um, and yes, I did tear some of it off. 
So yeah, this is probably the whitest this power adapter will ever be as it will get scratches and dirt over time. You have the little USB-C port there. Next up, we have the two meter USB-C cable, which is very long. This is literally the first time I've ever used a USB-C Mac that isn't my sister's computer or anyone else's. Like this is the first USB Mac I've had on my own. Look how long the cable is where you can't really see because it's all tangled up. But yeah, as you can see, the cable is really long if I can untie this. This is how long this cable is. Look at that. Putting that aside now, we now have the MacBook itself. I love peeling the plastic off things, so here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. Wow, this is a stunning computer. Look at the color on it. Wow, this is amazing. I'm already in love with this thing. So we're gonna take a brief look around the computer and as you can see my grubby fingerprints all over already. On the left side, you have two USB-C ports, aka Thunderbolt 3 ports. On the back, you have the color matching hinge. On the right side, you have a headphone jack and two more USB-C ports. On this side, you have the thumbnail that opens the computer. Up top, you have the color matching Apple logo, which is not backlit anymore, which isn't a big deal for me, to be honest. And on the back of the computer, you just have the black plastic feet, nothing else, nothing special. Alrighty, so we're now gonna turn on the computer and set it up. I actually still can't get over how well this computer blends in with my setup in my bedroom and my office. So opening the computer up with a piece of paper that protects the keyboard from the glass. Take that out. And uh, oh, the computer turned on by itself. That's certainly different for last time because I had to use the power button to turn on last time. So yeah, here we go. When you open up the computer, you also have the non-butterfly keyboard. This is now a scissor keyboard again, which I hated the butterfly keyboard. It had no travel in it whatsoever. And you have the oversized trackpad, which looks absolutely amazing. Of course, you get- Use English as the main language. Press the return key. All right. And then you have the touch bar and you have the dedicated escape key this time, which is again, another really nice touch. So obviously we're gonna use English and we live in Australia. Select your Wi-Fi network. So now we're on to data and privacy. Transfer information, just Mac, don't transfer anything. And sign in my Apple ID. Now it's gonna send me a vet message with a verification code. Terms and conditions, no, I can't agree with that. Yes, of course I'm gonna agree. Agree, and create a computer account. It's actually using my Memoji as my profile pic, but I'm actually gonna select something else for now, actually. Pass all requirements, yeah, I'll do that in a minute. Default. You know what, we're just gonna take a photo of the camera cause why not, if the camera wants to turn on, there we go. So as you can see, this still has a FaceTime 720p camera, which has not changed since my last computer. It would be good if they had a 1080p camera, but this doesn't really matter as long as it's doing the job. So okay, re. Oh, that was underwhelming. I was gonna do a funny face, but you know, we'll just stick with that, I guess. Um, click save and do a password. As you can see, it is now creating the account. And it's gonna set up my iCloud account now too. Come on, hurry up. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. So now it's asking me to enter my iPhone passcode so I can access my iCloud account. So it's asking me to turn on Find My Mac, even though I don't think Find My is really necessary on a Mac, to be honest, but I'm still gonna turn it on anyway. Express setup, allow maps and other services. Yep, yeah, continue. Um, send crash and usage data. No, I don't want to do that. That's a bit weird. Yep. Enable Siri. I hate Siri, but I'm going to set her up anyway, just because why not? Improve Siri and dictation. I want to share my audio recordings. All your files and photos in iCloud. Sure. File vault disk encryption. Yeah, I'll turn that on. And now it's asking me to set up my touch ID. So as you can see in the touch bar, it's click, it's pointing over to the touch ID sensor, which is the power, which also acts as the power button to left to wrist your finger on touch ID repetitively. So I'm going to do that right now. It's actually a lot faster than on my iPhone. <laughs> Pretty funny how that works. Touch ID is ready. Your fingerprint can be used to unlock your Mac. Awesome. I'd much rather use Face ID, but obviously that probably won't come till the Apple Silicon Macs come. So choose your look. I'm obviously going to go for dark mode because I'm not really big on light mode as it's a bit harsh on my eyes. So I'll click continue. I can change it later if I want in here. And the True Tone display. So it's going to see without. Um, true Tone display, I'll probably turn on and off. I'm going to use True Tone for like most average things, but I'll probably turn it off when I'm editing and stuff because True Tone basically messes with the color and stuff and it might not give you accurate color when you're editing. So I'm gonna click um, continue. So it's setting up my Mac. 
So here we are, booted into macOS Catalina 10.15. As you can see, it looks really, really nice, especially in this display and the dark mode just goes perfectly with the dark computer. So let's take a look at the scale resolutions quickly before I get going. So displays, scaled. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, there's a lot of space. I'm definitely gonna be keeping on that. Wow, that is really nice. So yeah, that's my MacBook all set up now. So yeah, that's my MacBook Pro all set up now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, despite the fact that I might have stuffed up a few words and stuff. I just have not done an unboxing video in a long time. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and please leave a like, subscribe, and a comment if we can. This is Bailey Ethan Rawson, signing out.